this one a little dark. That's better. Hello. This is a little uneven. Guess I probably should have wrote share. Nah, actually, I shouldn't have done that. This is as respectful as possible. Okay. I want to make sure this is as respectful as possible uh, to the families, loved ones. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Let's try this. I don't have any uh, information on the officer involved shooting uh, that took place uh, in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, I do know that it was a Winnebago County Sheriff's deputy that was uh, involved in it. Uh, I don't, I'm not here to try to do any type of reporting or any type of uh, journalism. Uh, it's this, uh, this other mic, this, one of these mics is hooked up to the, uh, to the, here, hold on one second. One of these mics is hooked up to the. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. Oh, can't do that. Right. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Uh, I'm not here to do any type of journalism. I'm not here to break any type of stories. I'm here to have an open dialogue with the city as long as these phone batteries allow me to. Uh, I believe this one should be charging. Okay, yeah, so I got them charging. I'm just here to have an open dialogue with the city. I'm not here to break any type of stories. Uh, I'm, uh, if, the, if the family of this young man, if the family, excuse me, I'm saying young man, if the family of whoever this man is is uh, religious uh, in any type of way, I, 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 my pr you're in my prayers. I'm, I'm, uh, my, I have, I'm sending prayers for you. Uh, if not, you are my thoughts and in my heart. Uh, I cannot imagine what it must be like to uh, have a, a loved one uh, taken taken from you. Uh, so I'm not here to try to do anything uh, about this. Uh, speak about this specific incident because I don't know the information regarding this specific incident. Uh, what I am trying, what I, I do want to do is, is speak about what has taken place in the city of Rockford in Winnebago County over the last, uh, we're coming up on 12 months. We're coming up on 12 months. George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis. Uh, and on the day that, on the, the, the moment, the moment that George Floyd took his last breath, will be documented in history and in time, just like many moments in American history, as a chance when this country uh, had a chance to, to, to change uh, the societal values, had a chance to, uh, to change, uh, had a chance to change the status quo, had a chance to, to, to try to make up for things that have happened in the past. And I don't want to speak in any type of uh, uh, race uh, in this specific moment right now because I don't know the race of whoever was killed by the police. What I want to speak about is uh, state sanctioned violence. Uh, the state sanctioned violence that has been that has went on in this city since George Floyd was killed is is uh, astronomical. It has came from uh, multiple police departments. It has came from multiple officers in law enforcement departments, and it has came regularly and repeatedly. And it's came with almost uh, zero response from elected officials. It came from almost zero response from people who are supposed to be community leaders, whether that be uh, religious uh, priests or, uh, uh, or clergy. It's come from almost zero response with organizations and organizational leaders. Uh, and, and it's come with almost uh, with nowhere near enough response from individual community members. We all we all are to blame for the these cycles continuing. We're all to blame for these cycles continuing. And so. Rockford, just like every other city in this nation, had an opportunity on the, the second George Floyd took his last breath to say that this these these that police violence, police terrorism, that mass incarceration violence and, and the, the, the the traumatization that goes along with mass incarceration, that we 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 are going to uh, be on the right side of history and we are going to start trying to change things and we are going to start trying to to uh, value each one of our uh, uh, community members 
uh, differently than we have valued them before. We are going to change the culture of the policing in this city to try to prevent lies from being uh, taken unnecessarily. We deal with enough. We deal with enough uh, 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 societal violence without state-sanctioned violence coming down. And so, people went out and marched on May 30th. People went out and marched, uh, and some people went out there and marched for Jovan Fresco. Some people went out there and marched for Demetrius Bennett. Some people went out there and marched for Mark Barmore, uh, for Eddie Patterson, and for Kerry Blake, and for, uh, and for and Logan Bell, uh, and, and Eugene Washington, uh, and, and, multiple, and mul multitudes of other, uh, of the, of other people. Uh, there has been, uh, I don't even remember the number offhand. I'm sorry, the, the, the amount of numbers that have been going on. The, uh, I've been trying to remember these past 10, 11 months. Uh, but there's a, a, a numerous people who have been, uh, whose lives have been lost besides the amount of families and the people who have been traumatized from these incidents, but lives who have been lost to state sanctioned violence in the city. And unfortunately, every time that has happened, things have went back to business as usual. Too many times. If it, and you can go back to some of these names, these date, they date back to a century ago. They date back to last century. And so the cycle that inevitably will happen, and again, I'm not getting into any specifics. I don't know the specific situation. I don't know what happened uh, in, this situ in this, this isolated incident. But let me tell you what the cycle of these incidents look like. Let me tell you what the cycle of what these things go, uh, usually happen from here. What will happen from here is that the, whoever this person is who has, what, what, what usually happens from here is that the person who the state sanctioned violence has come down upon becomes criminalized. They look back into their history and into their life and they try to find any mistake or any decision that they feel can be viewed as a mistake by the general public and they publicize it. The family of whoever this is will be will be get will not be given answers in an adequate time manner. News stories will come out with false information. They will have to watch uh, news channels and if they use social media at all, they may have to deactivate their social media because they'll see people in comments uh, 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 bringing up some of maybe the the uh, decisions that maybe aren't the the most favorable decisions that their loved ones may have made. They'll have to see they have to see people constantly take sides and judgments over of something that may be their loved one's last moments. They have to understand that that there is a, a, lit, a, a long list of people uh, and uh, families who have never gotten justice for this exact incident that they have went through. They'll have to wonder if. Uh, it, because and unfortunately, because of how things too often are, if there's not a, 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 a video to accompany this to accompany the situation again, if there's not a video to accompany the situation, if whoever your loved one is, is not in the most vulnerable position. George Floyd had to be in the most vulnerable position, the most vulnerable position. If they have any type of fight or flight uh, reaction, then you'll have to see people. Uh, you'll, you'll see that it, you don't get the same outpouring as someone else. Imagine that. Think about that. Think about last year having to, to, to watch, not having to, but think about last year watching people pour out for George Floyd, pour out for his family, pour out in support of this man being killed. And then imagine all the people who got killed after George Floyd was killed in all of these different cities in this states who didn't get to do that outpouring, didn't come for, for them because it wasn't a video or because maybe their loved one was running, or maybe because their loved one had a gun in the car even though they wasn't reaching for the gun, or maybe because their loved one made a sudden reaction, or maybe because their loved one tried to defend themselves. There's no outpouring for them. There's no outcry for them. There's no uprise for them. There's no uh, 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 revolutionary speeches for them. It's just back to business as usual. And unfortunately, unfortunately, what is with another part of the cycle that is happening is that somebody in some family and some person in the city right now is going to see what happened to this family and to this person. And they're going to say, I'm happy it's not me. I'm happy that this is not my family. They're going to hold their loved ones tight, hold them closer. Uh, unfortunately, they're not going to do anything to try to be involved for this, these people to get justice. And one day it'll be them. And then one day it'll be them. And so we have to get to a place where where we understand that if the people. If the people who are paid tax dollars to protect and to serve 
to to enforce the law if they if the law is not enforced equally upon them how will we ever get to a place where where people uh, respect the law if that's what if that's what it is if you are a component of law and order how can you ever have it's just like living in a house if the if the the parent is always leaving stuff in the in the kitchen and always leaving the toilet up or or leaving a mess everywhere you expect the kids to re, to 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 do the opposite to follow, to just to continue to do as I say and not as I do how long do you think that lasts So here we are again. This is one of the things that I learned very early on. I learned that uh I learned that and it's one of the reasons I couldn't it's one of the reasons I could not return to business as usual is because uh I understood the moment that we were in in history. I understood the moment that we were we in in time. And I understood that within that moment, in that moment, that these things were going to continue to happen until addressed properly. That's the moment of time that we are in. Chicago, a 13 year old was killed by a police officer a couple of weeks ago. His family was supposed to be viewing the body camera, the body camera footage. Tyrus Jones family still ain't seen the dash camera video footage. Denzel Duvant, the officers who beat him and assaulted him are still on the force. Nothing has happened to them. All the night we have a this is. And I, I, I want this. I want people to uh, understand this too. When we put these, when we put these pictures up on these light poles that's over here, I don't say their name square. If you haven't been out here, I, uh, I hope that you can come out so you can take a look, so you can understand the gravity of the nature of these things. When we put these pictures on these light poles, we knew we had to leave light poles empty because it was going to be more uh, pictures that was going to go into the light poles. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. We made, when we made these memorials and we put them up here, we knew we had to leave light poles empty because somebody else would be going on those light poles. One of the reasons I couldn't go back to business as usual once we came back out, when we, once we came out here, one of the reasons that I've stayed out here in sub-zero weather and I've stayed out here in inclement weather and I've sacrificed time with people that I care about is because I understood that my conscience would never let me uh, move freely and live freely and breathe freely if now that I have been awakened and seen these things, I had to keep getting reminded of them happening and I was just back to my job as usual or back to business as usual. I wouldn't be able to do it. It would have drove me insane. I'd be going crazy right now if I couldn't just set up right here. If I hadn't just been doing, if we hadn't been doing this, this teaching here, you know what I'm saying? I'd be, I'd probably be ready to go crazy. This is, this is uh, cathartic for me to get on here and talk. I feel bad for this man's family. I hope I can reach out to this uh, to this man's family, speak to this man's family. It made me think about being out here and, and meeting Tyrus Jones' family for the first time. And I've said this on a live I did previously, but I think it's so unfortunate that we allowed uh, divide and conquer tactics, divisive tactics, to not get uh, to not try to get some justice for that uh, for that uh, man's family. And I think that, and I think that again. I want justice for everybody's family. I do not know any situations because we're going to be 100% transparent and 100% funky on this right here because I don't got no time. We're not going to beat around the bush. I don't know anything about Tyrus Jones' past. I don't know anything about any, uh, anything that may have happened to anybody else in the city involving inner city violence or any type of community violence. But this is what I know. This is what I know. And I don't know the race of whoever this was who was killed who was killed today by the police. And I'm sorry to this man's family. Again, this is not to break no news. This is not to be a journalist. None of those things. For years, for years, for hundreds of years, nobody has cared about anything that happens to black people's lives. Whether it's a black person who take their life, whether it's a police officer who take their life, whether it's a white man who take their life, whether it was uh, 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 instances in, in California where hate crimes happen to uh, black people from uh, 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 Korean store owners. Nobody has cared what happened to black people in this country since the inception of this country. Same thing, is for, same thing goes for indigenous people. Nobody has cared what happened to them. This country was created off of the, 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 the rape and 
pillaging of the indigenous people and then off of the rape and pillaging and enslavement of African people. And nobody has cared. How, nobody has genuinely cared. Collectively, society has not genuinely cared about what happens to black people and indigenous people in this nation. And that has started to spread to what happens to women. That has started to spread to what happens to LGBTQ plus uh, IA folks in this country and what happens to Latina and Latino people in this country because this is what this is how hatred works. This is how these 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 uh, these isms work. You cannot isolate it to one part to one set of people to one person. You can't walk through life and say I, I hate gay people. I don't like gay people. It spreads to others to other sex you to other things. You cannot walk around and say I hate black people. I don't like black people. It spreads to other things. You cannot contain hatred like that. You can't contain it that way. And it's the same way with violence. You can't say, well, it's okay to, to beat up black people you know, if, with police officers. It's okay to shoot black people. Or it's okay to shoot Latina or Latino people. It's okay, to, it's okay for that. It's, it will spread and bleed over to white people eventually. Eventually it will. You can't say it's okay to, to beat poor people or to kill poor people. You don't care about what happens to poor people. Eventually, it'll spread over to middle class people and the rich people, too. Eventually, it will. That's, how, that's the nature of, of hatred and the nature of violence. It can't be isolated. And so here we are again in Rockford, Illinois, where another family has, now, has to deal with the traumatization of state-sanctioned violence. Another family has to deal with the traumatization of state sanctioned violence. And I want you to look, I want people to look deeply inside themselves tonight and for this week coming up. And I want you to ask, what, what have you genuinely done to try to change uh, the narrative of this society to be on the right side of history since May 30th in Rockford, Illinois, or since George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis? What have you done besides Facebook posts? Besides, buy some clothes from somebody who who uh, uh, is uh, that is, is a black business owner, or buy some food or some plates from somebody who is a black business owner. What have you done? Again, this is not to break no stories. This is not to try to be no journalist. This is not try to uh, to get no kind of clout or no type of uh, fame or any any of those things. This is this this is just a, to a reminder to people who may be on the periphery, who may uh, they they just need that extra push. They need an extra incentive. It's still happening. It's still happening in a in a country with. A plethora of money and a plethora of funds and a country that can send people to the moon can send people to the moon. It's going to be some children that go to sleep without no without, without no food tonight. It's going to be it's going to be somebody who because they can't get the, the proper mental health treatment. They succumb to their addiction somewhere tonight. And this cycle is going to perpetuate. And excuse me, excuse me for my emotion too. excuse me for my not because I'm ashamed to show the emotion. But because I wish I was more, uh, I wish I, I, I wish I was capable of being more ready for this moment, more ready for this moment. But it ain't no way to be ready for it. My uncle told me that about having a kid one time. I was telling him, he was like, it ain't no way to be ready for it. And it's the same way with death. It's the same way with these with state sanctioned violence. It ain't no way to be ready to wake up and somebody send you a picture of a Denzel beat up or mugshot. It ain't no way to to to. Uh, be ready for me to be sitting in the house with my kid a week removed from doing city market protests a month re of removed from being arrested three times for uh, For trying to speak up about state sanctioned violence happening to black people and then to get a message about uh, a black man being shot in the back unarmed You don't you can't be prepared for that But I don't want my emotion to incite emotion in nobody else I guess that is what I'm that's what I'm saying because we need strength in this in these moments and I and I hope that that the, the family of this man, that people provide strength to them, provide strength to them in these moments. And, and sometimes uh, uh, tears can be can be leading to strength. So I don't want to I'm not uh, ashamed to shed tears. I'm not ashamed to cry. That's just wasn't my intentions when I set this when I set the video up. And so here we go. Where. Now it will be. Uh. Now would it be uh, news cameras and 
uh, people will care about these things again. And uh, Jovan, Jovan Fresco was uh, murdered by the Metro Police Department. Uh, the trial uh, for him, for him is, takes place uh, this, this spring. I hope that it's as much of an outpouring in this city for that trial for him as it has been is at every time on the Monday through Friday when I get on Facebook and I see y'all mentioning George Floyd. And I don't say that critically. I don't say that critically. I was in the same position a year ago, two years ago. So I don't say that critically. I say that in the sense of we got something. We got to change something. We got to do something different. Because when we can get to a place where they not killing us, where they not killing us as, as people, as society, again, because I don't know the race or the ethnicity of this person. So I don't want to make no kind of conversation contingent on this person's ethnicity because unfortunately we have gotten to a place where people care more about the skin color than they care about the person's life. And I don't and I won't play into that game. So I won't get on here and make this a a, a speech about uh, racial injustice or, or, or race. I'm going to get on here and I'm going to make this a speech about the society and the societal problems that we have. And how deeply embedded violence is in us, and to the fact that it's normalized, we okay with it. It's a story every couple of every day of, of some type of a, a violence, and the the way that we dealing with people who commit violence is by committing violence onto them, and then when they come out of being inside of these these prisons, or they come they're, they they they're released, and then they perpetuate that violence back onto the society. You put them back in, the, we put them back inside of the place that uh that made them worse in the first place, and the cycle just keep on and it continues and it continues. Who it's, it's not anybody who has a loved one who has been in and out of the system. They traumatized from that. Their loved one is traumatized from that. The, and the idea that hurt people hurt people is so true. We so far it's, it's, it's sort of like the gun laws. We so far behind. We so far beyond where we should be at as a society based on the, uh, the wealth that we have, based on some of the, the material accomplishments that we have. We so far behind that I do wonder at times, is it a way for us to even catch up? Is it a way for people to care about when somebody get killed? Is it a way for people to say, what can I do to make sure this don't happen to somebody else in the same way? We haven't even got to a place where we're trying to find, we don't even, we're not even finding new ways. At least let's find a new problem. At least let's find a new problem. We can't even find new problems. You can go, you can look at literature from a hundred years ago and no matter, almost no matter who it is, they can speak to the same American issues from back then that we got today. And so then, and so then, well, this is what you got. This is what everybody got to ask themselves tonight. You got to ask yourself, how much will you? What? What is? What do you need to care about this? Will you need to care about this situation? Do you need this to have happened a certain way? Do you need to have a video? Do you need uh, this person to have a a, a clean record? And again, how these things happen too often, how these things happen too often is the story will come out and, uh, be, uh, and the story won't be uh, squeaky clean or it won't be just uh, framed just the, the perfect way. Uh, and people won't care about it. And people will, people will just go on to the next thing and go back to watching basketball, go back to uh, uh, going out to, to City Market coming up on Friday. Uh, the food truck Tuesdays will be starting up here real soon. Uh, weather starting to have an uptick, uptick next week. People go right back to business as usual. You give it ten years. Give it ten. Get ten years. This whole it'll be five six blocks with memorials up on them. Five six blocks. If we keep going, as we keep retroactively going back, it might end up being that way anyways. It should be a. It should be a. Just for clarification, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department—they all supposed to have body cameras, so it should be a body camera. 
And uh, I don't know how well this other phone can pick up the volume. This one got a mic. You might have to go to the May 30th Alliance page. I'm just going to let the phones run out to the phones die. I don't think we got the... I don't even think we got the book for the for 12 o'clock right now, so I don't know. We, we probably gonna put a pause on reading tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe we maybe we. It's been sirens all day, all day. Sirens back and forth all around the whole city. Spring getting here, summer getting here. Same same cycles. You can you can predict it. The same cycles. If you haven't ever done it before, I want you to I want you to go to Google and I want you to look up uh, Google police killings, police killings in the last however, whatever. The Washington Post or the Washington Journal, I think, uh, should have a website. You can see I don't think I, I wish I had another uh, Internet, another device. You can see how many uh, killings that has been in the last year. I think it's in the last 365 days. I think it's a thousand killings, a thousand police killings. Uh, I think this. I think maybe too, too. If it's anybody watching this too, I think this. The this. Let me say this. This is another thing I think I need to. Uh, and I want to say this. Make sure I'm saying this in the in the right manner. I don't want to offend nobody. Nobody to take this the right the wrong way. But uh, I have no interest in in in. I, I'm never my priority will always be thing will always is always going to be something that is permanent, never something that's secondary. Uh, and this is what I this is what I mean when I say that too many people just is too many people want to do things about this because uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a fad now or it's a moment now where they care about it now. And in a month or two months, they're going to care about something different. Like perfect example, it'll be an uptick in people caring about these po the state sanctioned violence and these, these, these killings uh, because of this happening. It'll be some, it'll be news stories. It'll, things will be resurfaced and revisited and, you know, it'll be for an, a week in the news cycle. These will all be things that happen again. They'll look into the things, the police officers, misconduct, maybe, and you know, things like that will happen. It'll be a, a story of interest again. And it'll be people who, uh, 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 you know, they'll, they'll be inboxing their group chat. Now them in their group chat, they back talking about this again, but eventually they're going to, they're going to go away and no, no longer care about this as much anymore. And so, uh, the people who are doing things to put things, events and stuff like that together for things like that. Uh, this is what I, I want. I want people to understand that that is, that's secondary. That's secondary. It's always going to be on the back burner. It will continue to always be on the back burner. These, these, uh, these orchestrated, uh, these orchestrated, uh, th these orchestrated things where people come together and they pretend like they care about this thing and they're interested and they want to hear about what you got to say. Th that those things are not real. Okay, I this is what I want you people to understand. Those things are not real. The the going and watching Queen is slim and crying in Queen is slim. The going and uh, uh, watching the George Floyd trial and making tweets and posts about how you can't get through this and oh my God, this is so hard and uh, these those are those things are not real. I don't know if people don't understand that by now or not, but those things are not real. Those are not tangible things. Anybody can do those things. Everybody does those things. What is real, what is tangible, what is real, what is actual is saying that business as usual will no longer happen. I'm okay with uncomfortability. If I cannot exist, if, if, the, if, you, if this is not going to be a permanent thing, if you are not permanently going to be uh, uh, focused on liberation, or if you are not permanently going to be focused on ending this state sanctioned violence, changing this society, if this is something that you're doing for a photo op, if this is something that you're doing for some type of uh, uh, event or meeting, if this is something that you're doing for some type of a news story, if these are the things that you're doing, I want you, if you're doing this, so that way you can feel as if you've done something to try to, to, to change the narrative if you do that those things aren't real these these pictures with uh, uh, uh these graphics of these t-shirts and and some of like the silent marches and uh these zoom meetings these those things are not real you want to know what's real on on may 30th when we marching in the streets and we march back to district one and you there that's real i don't care about none of that other stuff 
It's part. It's a. It's a. It's a press run. It's a press run. If you if you uh, at City Market Friday after Friday as a body as a witness to the demonstrations partaking in the demonstrations that is real, that's real, that's real. You coming out to the to, to City Hall and you out here at City Hall and you occupying space in City Hall that is real that's tangible that's real. These other things, these things that people doing to make it to make their conscience feel easier, to make them feel sleep easier at night, to make them feel as if they have done something. You came out and you marched after Tyrus Jones was shot. That is real. That's real. You was outside of jail supports after people got arrested in City Market. That's real. You stayed out there on May 30th after people was being beat and being tased and being pepper sprayed. That's real. That's real. Them Black Lives Matter shirts ain't real. Excuse me. Them posts that y'all make, them, the George Floyd posts, the, the crocodile tears that y'all crying, that ain't real. I want people to think about this. The only officer that's even has a, a possibility right now of, of facing any type of penalty for all of the stuff that happened last year is the one that, that did the most uh, visible, egregious thing. He had to do the most inhumane thing possible to face. And it's not even a murder one charge up on the table. Jacob Blake's the people who attempted to kill Jacob Blake is back out living their lives. Uh, people who killed Breonna Taylor is living their lives. The the amount the people who uh, uh, shot the uh, the young man in Cal was a young man in California who had a, a gun was just in his stuff. He dropped the gun. They shot him. They back. They I don't even know his name. There's so many people can't even remember their names. Too many people names to even remember. All right, so again, here we are again, six months since the last uh, shooting. Six months since the last shooting in Rockford, but only January 5th was when Denzel got assaulted. Uh, so that's three months, three months since the last docu real heavily documented or documented heavy, heavy case of violence. Six months. I mean, excuse me, three months. Uh, uh, Sage was assaulted uh, at the end of last July. People was assaulted at City Market, pepper sprayed at City Market. People was assaulted on May 30th, pepper sprayed, tased and beat on May 30th. Uh, at the back to blue on August 1st, people was pepper sprayed and attacked. And so as long as society, society and again, Again, as long as it don't matter, the people have this idea of trying to change policy or try to change legislation or get different people voted into office and things of that nature and these elect and electoral politics. But electoral politics and these policy changes are never going are never going to genuinely happen. And they're never even if they were to overnight to happen, they are never going to be enforced until the society views these things differently. And said so the society views these things differently. So we're going to see how we're going to see what exactly the, the, the society in Rockford, the community in Rockford or in Winnebago County, I should say, or the society in Winnebago County. We will see where, where, where their consciousness lies at in this next week coming up, where how this is, where how this is treated, where how this is, is spoken about, where how this is uh, uh, handled with the manner people try to or not to get uh, justice with the manner in which people are empathetic or are not empathetic uh, with this situation. And again, I don't know what happened. I don't know any specifics. This is not to be to break no news. It's not to be no journalist. 
uh, this is just a document and to bear witness that here we are, that this is this is an issue for because I think that some people still feel like this wasn't an issue, still felt like it's not a big deal. It's not nothing that really happened like that. You know, it's a, a blip on the radar. And so I, I'm just doing this to say we have been outside of City Hall for, uh, I think, almost 190 days. I think we had 187, 186. Uh, we got a, a you can't see it right now, but it's a picture of somebody who was Denzel, who was beat up on January 5th. Uh, by the Rockford Police Department, multiple officers. We came out here October 3rd after on October 2nd. Someone was shot by the Rockford Police Department. And here we are on uh, April 10th, 2021, and someone else has been uh, shot uh, by law enforcement in Rockford in Winnebago County area. This time was shot by a Winnebago County Sheriff's deputy uh, and murdered, killed, shot and murdered. So if we watched the, we watched the uptick, it went from, I mean, not that, what happened to Denzel is uh, not that what happened to Tyrus is less than what happened to Denzel, but it, Tyrus was shot, survived. Denzel was beat, survived. And now here we go. Somebody is shot and has not survived. And then I, now what I ask you is. Uh, what actions did you take? When. Uh, Denzel was assaulted. Denzel, people felt the need to say that they, it was people who felt uh, that Tyrus's situation was polarizing. Uh, Denzel's situation, that it wasn't, I, that same, those same issues didn't arise and uh, there was no societal outpour, no societal outcry. I was just talking to a guy today, talking to a guy today over by, uh, Built Chase Bank, the old Chase Bank building, and he was talking to me about uh, you know, some calls and some complaints and how uh, you know, money. You know, he can't, he don't want to. You can't. He got people running in the building. And, you know, he got to make sure his money right. You know, and I remember at City Market that was one of the things that somebody said to me. It was uh, money. They wanted to make sure that they was money right. They was worried about uh, losing money and uh, and not being able to have money. And so here we go again, where uh, April April tenth, where uh, someone has now been shot and killed by Winnebago County Sheriff's deputy officer. And uh, we will see uh, if we'll see what is important to people is money. Again, the most important thing to people is is the society as a as a whole going to uh, is the society as a whole going to feel as if depending on what this situation is, depending on what he did, then I'll take some time off of work and I'll march or I'll miss a couple of days at work and I'll march or maybe I'll uh, have conversations with my family about these things, depending on how the situation is. And uh, I think we have to get to a place uh, as a society where we start valuing life more. Uh, I wish that more people that I spoke to uh, when we were out here protesting, I wish more people led with uh, what happened to Denzel instead of uh, why are you out here? Or I wish more people when we were at City Market instead of asking why are you disrupting traffic, uh, asked about the pictures of people who have been beat on May 30th who were on poster boards. Uh, and I think that uh, as a society, it'll be uh, we'll continue to go through this, you know, and everybody will have somebody that's touched by some form of violence. And it's not until it touches you personally that uh, that you feel the need for to not go back to business as usual, that you feel the need to. To, to stop everything, that you feel the need to to adjust the way that you're living. Uh, I personally can no longer go back to business as usual. I can never go back to my life as it once was uh, after the things I've seen on May 30th, after the things I've seen uh, at Back to Blue, after the things that I've seen uh, police officers do to children, the things I've seen police officers do to women, the things I've seen police officers do to people who pose no imminent threat, the things I've seen police officers do to people who had no weapons in hand, to people who uh, weren't even part of certain protests that were going on, who were just in the area. Uh, I never, I'm sorry, if it was a different time, I'll talk to you. I, I, I promise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good night. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. I, I've seen these things uh, firsthand. Uh, and I, I can't go back to uh, trying to make as much money as I can in an hour. Or, you know, uh, uh, I was I, music real heavy. You know, I can't go back to trying to make music and hustle up a couple of dollars to uh, to make music now that I've I've seen these things happen. And I know that these things are happening. And so. You know, here we, you know, I feel drained, 
I feel I feel tired. I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how people have uh, have done these things uh, for generations and decades. People like Angela Davis or Cornell West, who've to to see this, to see the the little value that has that's given to life. Uh, again, I said this on a la- on another live that I did, but I don't want people to think that uh, I feel this way about I feel this way about all the violence that happens in this city. I think that you cannot remove any one incident from another. I think that part of the reason that uh, we had we deal with inner community violence is because of the amount of state sanctioned violence that happens. I think that the amount of people who have uh, been cycled in and out of Winnebago County Jail contributes to the amount of people who are cycled in and out of who, who bodies going to funeral homes and people who are cycled in and out of Rockford Memorial uh, from, from gunshot wounds. I've sat outside of, of hospitals after uh, friends of mine have been shot. Uh, I've, 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 I've had to, uh, to, to because of uh, 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 too much emotion, not go to funerals for people that I care about. So I don't, I don't speak these things in a sense of being uh, uh, ignorant uh, to, to inner community violence and to the violence that, that, that that is subjected to us uh, over lack of resources, over lack of opportunities. Uh, but I think the problem is that we cannot use one thing as an argument to uh, erase the other. And the fact of the matter is that there will always be inner community violence. There will always be violence in places where opportunities are deprived, in places where uh, privilege is deprived. There will always be those things. Uh, there does not always have to be state sanctioned violence. It don't. It doesn't have to be. We can. And then once we can remove state sanctioned violence, once we can remove that, once the people who are in power can are no longer allowed to do violence, are no longer allowed to do violence with impunity uh, and with, with no transparency, then we can get to a place where we can start dealing with in, with our, our, our inner community violence, when we can start pulling resources from police departments and putting our resources into, into, into mental health facilities and putting those, the money that they spend onto these jails and the money that they spend uh, on, these, these big, on these courtrooms uh, and the justice center and start putting those into uh, better education, into, into putting those into uh, 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 better housing conditions, into better living conditions, into uh, uh, better health resources, into, into giving more permanent jobs for people when they're giving uh, people more chance to, to uh, uh, opportunity of life. That's what it comes down to. These, these, these state sanctioned killings, what they are, are they are, uh, they are just the, the, the microcosms of the fact that the, that this country and this nation doesn't value any individual life. And, uh, collectively, we don't end up value individual life, and then individually, we don't value individual life. And it makes it so that way when uh, certain things happen, you know, we're, we're numb to it. You know, how can you, you know, how can you, how can people truly uh, have the empathy that they need to have for someone being shot by the police when it happens this often, or killed by the police when it happens this, this, this often? When it's people who in their lifetime, everybody who was on this poll was killed in their lifetime. How can they still have the same uh, uh, passion when it happens to somebody again? You know, if you 40, 50 years old in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, all of these different people that have been killed, you done seen it happen. How can you not feel defeated? And that's not to say I feel defeated. I don't, I don't feel defeated, but I, but I do feel, I feel devastated for this, for this family. I feel devastated for the family of Michael Sago, who, who, who came out here last week and brought flowers and, and balloons uh, and has to deal with, you know, the criminalization. We're here. We're in a place where it's raining. I got electronics out, so I got to get these electronics put up uh, for don't nothing work out here. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end the live. Uh, it's going to be an interesting week ahead of us. Uh, I hope that uh, and Shannon Gray's family came out here. I just seen. Uh, I just want to make sure I say that too. Shannon Gray's family came out here and left something. I feel devastated for them, for the people who have to be constantly reminded that that these things are are allowed to happen to them and allowed to happen because of who does it. And so, uh, again, I don't know have any answers for anybody. I don't have any any statements for anybody uh i just know that we gotta we gotta something gotta give we gotta change something
uh, I'm ending it.